that we enter into. But it starts at the cross when you submit in faith to Christ. He gifts you with his righteousness. You have a perfect standing before the Father. You are reborn. There is a new life that comes to dwell in you. The Spirit of God, your spirit are united. You become a new creation. And that new creation then grows unto perfection. And sometimes it's a long process. Sometimes things happen very, very quickly as well. An article that I got from preaching today, and I want to use this to close, is entitled, Why Hollywood Praises Elliot Page and Blacklists Beckett Cook. Uh, if you don't know the names, Elliot Page, uh, uh, I believe his name before his uh, gender operation, I think was, I could be wrong, I think it was Elaine. No, Elliot. Anyway, was, uh, had a sex conversion operation. Hollywood praises that person. But Becca Cook, who has been interviewed a number of times on Focus on the Family, was a declared uh, homosexual. Uh, he lived that lifestyle for probably 20 or 30 years. Very, very successful in Hollywood. He was a, uh, uh, I, he was involved in the design, fashion design world, and very, very successful at what he did. Was invited, he came back from Paris, very, I've got the timetable mixed up, so I won't give you the timing. But it happened this way. When he was in Paris, uh, he became aware of the fact that this was all he had. This wealth, this success, these friends, this lifestyle. And he experienced a sense of utter emptiness. Now, I never told anybody about it. He came back and a while later, I'm not sure the timetable, was in a restaurant with one of his friends who was also a uh, gay individual. And uh, next to them, at a table, were a couple of young people, younger men I assume, involved in a Bible study. And this intrigued him. So partway through his stay there, he turned to the guys and he asked them, he said, are you Christians? They said, yes, they are. So they talked for a while. And he said, what do you think of homosexuality? And uh, they said, well, the Bible says it's a sin. And he said, they, they were just right blunt, right out front, genuine, didn't condemn it, didn't you know, elaborate on it, just made a statement. And uh, so they talked for a while longer, and uh, these two guys invited him to attend their church. Uh, he said, but I don't think, probably not going to see me there. I think it was a week later he was there. And he experienced a absolutely incredible conversion. He calls it the Damascus Road conversion. And this guy is so rock solid, biblically. I just love listening to him. And he is so confident in Christ. It is just a refreshing experience to listen to his testimony. But anyway, this is what he says. Uh, for years, Beckett Cook had a highly successful career as a production engineer in the fashion world. And during that time, he lived fully engaged as a gay man in Hollywood. And Cook said, I had many boyfriends over the years, attended pride parades, marched in innumerable rallies for gay marriage and equality. My identity as a gay was immutable, or so I thought. And in 2009, he experienced something extraordinary, a radical encounter with Jesus Christ while attending an evangelical church in Hollywood for the first time. It's the first time he's in the door of a church. I walked into the church as a gay atheist, and I walked out two hours later a born-again Christian. In love with Jesus, I was stunned by this reversal. Since then, I no longer identify as gay, but rather choose to be celibate, because I believe God's plan and purpose revealed in the Bible is authoritative, authoritative true, and good. Surrendering my sexuality hasn't been easy. I still struggle with the vestiges of same-sex attraction, 
But denying myself, taking up my cross, and following Jesus is an honor. Any struggles I experience in pale in comparison to the joy of a personal relationship with the one who created me and gives my life meaning. My identity, listen to this now, my identity is no longer my sexuality. It's not the old man, that's not my identity. My identity is Jesus. But instead of celebrating Cook for his authenticity, when he came out as a Christian to his friends, he was met with skepticism and in some cases outright hostility. His closest friends abandoned him. His production design agency in Hollywood dropped him under the most vague and frivolous of pretexts, even though he was one of their top artists. Just a comment on that. Right after his conversion, that didn't take place. He says in his testimony that actually his business even improved after he became a Christian. This happened when he produced a book and the book was his story of how he became a Christian, a born-again Christian, and gave up the gay lifestyle. Shortly after that, he lost most of his friends, he lost his business, and he was basically kicked out of Hollywood. He lost everything he had when he published that book. Anyway, Cook went on to say, I'm not complaining or claiming to be a victim. What I gained in Christ is absolutely priceless. Like the Apostle Paul, I'm learning to count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Yes, the loss of close friendships and a lucrative career were harsh, but being in the kingdom of God more than compensates. And recently, Cook exclaimed to a friend, I am the most authentic person you know. In fact, because I am now who God created me to be, I am finally authentic. Becoming more and more like Jesus, the truest human who ever lived, is a far more authentic transformation than becoming more and more like whatever self my fluid feelings suggest on any given day. Now I pondered that last statement. That is an incredible statement that he made because it runs countercultural. It goes contrary to everything that is being said in our day. That if you find your true identity, you just follow your feelings, you follow yourself. It's a self realization that you need. No, it is not a self realization that you need. You need to die because sin has a grip on us. And unless there is a break made and a separation made from that old life in Christ through a union with Him, through new birth, you're never going to be free. You will never be free apart from that. Well, I could say much more. I think that's, that's enough. Let's pray. Father, every one of us here struggle with our past. But Father, we are just so very, very grateful that Jesus made a break for us, that he delivered us from that. And that past is no longer us or new creatures in Christ. You, Father, in Christ, you are our identity now. You define who we are. We are saints. We are sons of God. We are children of God. We are part of the bride of Christ, and we glory in that, Father. We thank you for that. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.